Howdy, Tinker Nerds! What have you guys been up to lately? Me? Well, I just released a brand new book called Upcycled Technology. Go ahead and check it out in the video description. And if you've already purchased it, please, please, please leave a review on Amazon. Leave a review and I'll leave you alone. Enough book talk! Let's continue slogging in our bare feet down the unfinished road of DIY 3D printers. Okay, in our last video we covered, well, not much. Sorry about that. All right, look, we got our motors that we laboriously extracted from some spare optical drives. Does it have to be optical drives? It does not. You just need a small or medium-sized stepper motor that creates linear movement like on this scanner or maybe even a printer. Then the last time I spent a good chunk of the video designing a more efficient sliding tray. But when I started looking online, I saw a ton of different mini CNC laser engraving machines that were basically what I was trying to make. They even come with their own optical drive trays, but the downside is these things range from around $80 to $200 and they only have an X and Y axis. But if you're willing to spend that much, it seems like a really good option. So out of curiosity, I ordered one and it was surprisingly good quality and everything was already lined up so I don't have to meticulously measure everything to create my own. So here's the thing. My overall goal has been to create a better version of my initial CD-ROM drive 3D printer and to explain all the different options that are out there available to you so that you can make your own decisions on how to proceed. So I think what I'm gonna do for now is just use this as a base. And since it already has its own drive trays, that means I don't have to use any of my own and I can use those as spares or extras. The only thing it doesn't have is a Z axis. So what I can do is use my custom designed axis as the Z axis. All right, with that settled, let's control this sucker. In one of the previous videos, I showed you how you can use an easy driver stepper controller board to control the motor using Using an Arduino. Over the break, I ordered some of these more popular Pololu A4988 motor drivers. These are cheaper and more commonly used, but they're slightly more difficult to set up in comparison to the easy drivers. But regardless, I wanted to give it a try. So here is where you have to input a 12 to 36 volt power source. Anything lower won't really work. This is where the motor pins go, and these connect to the Arduino 5 volt and ground pins. And then these two pins connect to 4 and 3 on the Arduino. You also want to connect the sleep and reset pins together since we won't be controlling them by code. Now we can load up this test Arduino code and watch it work. One nifty feature of the A4988 is the ability to change the stepper motor's micro-stepping amount. Micro-stepping is the process of dividing up the rotation amount of the stepper motor to make the movements more smooth. You can use these three pins in this guide to adjust the amount of micro-steps the motor takes. Since these motors are small, the 16th step micro-step is probably good enough. So I connected them all up to an Arduino pin and added this code. Code. And basically we're going to need to repeat this process for each of the stepper motors that we're using. And that brings us to the other reason I decided to try out the A4988 stepper driver. It's because of this. This is an A4988 CNC shield that fits on top of an Arduino. All you have to do is pop the A4988 chips into the CNC driver and then pop it on top of an Arduino. A lot of popping going on here. This thing cost me about $27 and came with its own A4988 chips, an Arduino, and a stepper motor. So that sweet little price point isn't enough, the CNC Shield offers a lot of extra features, such as easy motor connections, adjusting the micro steps using these jumpers, and in-stop supports. What pray tell are in-stops? So whenever you tell an axis on a 3D printer to move, it doesn't know where to stop, so it'll keep trying to move even though it may reach the end of the linear rail and it's just gonna sit there and grind until the command is complete. So end stops are little switches that sit at each end of the linear rail so that if the platform hits it, it'll trigger the switch which stops the command. So even though I'm not gonna integrate those into this project, it's nice to have that option available in case you eventually want to. All right, we're making some good progress. 
All right, so at this point, we've been able to control the stepper motors through Arduino code. But what we wanted to do is be able to take G code, which are 3D printer files and CNC files, and interpret them into motor movements. And in order to do that, we'll need to install Gerbil on the Arduino. You can find more about Gerbil on the project page here, and you'll want to download the Gerbil master zip file from this link. Within the zip file, you'll want to extract the gerbil folder, and then in the Arduino software, go to sketch, import library, and import the gerbil folder that we extracted. Now under file and examples, you should see a gerbil category. Select gerbil upload from within it, and then with your Arduino connected, just upload the sketch to it. And with that done, you should be able to use programs like Universal G Code Sender or Gerbil Controller to move the different motors. But that's all the time I got for this video, so we're gonna have to cover that next time. Got any ideas? You can submit your own or vote for your favorites at tinkernut.com ideas. Click here to watch more videos like this, and if you got any value out of my show and would like to give some value back, please consider liking, subscribing, or following me on social media. That's it for this tutorial. For more, go to tinkernut.com.